Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and share any and everyone that you can. Just bring it out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right into the video. So, I was out when the news broke. I just got in the house. As you guys already know, Drew Holiday signed a four year $138 million extension with the Boston Celtics. I don't know like the tax implications. I didn't look any of that up um, before I just hopped on the camera. I don't know what the Celtics actually did by doing this deal at this time i don't know what they did by doing this deal in general except for two things i do know that drew holiday's player option at the end of the season was about 37 and a half and the first year of this new contract is 30 million so we do save a little bit there and two drew holiday just gets job security as an agent point guard it's really really hard to get a big deal with multiple years on it and yes it is a risk giving a point guard that's already 30 pushing the mid 30s a big deal but Drew Holiday has been everything that we've asked for, right? And then he's also become one of the best three-point shooters in the league while still being his great defensive self. So the Celtics traded for Chris Asperzingis. They signed him to a two-year $60 million deal, with his, which is immense value for somebody that is good as he is and that has been as impactful on his new team as he has done with us. And then we trade for Drew, signed him to a full-year 138. And again, we save a little bit of money. Drew gets some job security everything's all well now there was two things i thought of when i first seen the deal it's one i was like oh shit, that's a big extension then i was like hey drew locked up we straight right but then i thought about Derek white and i was like hmm i was just noticing shit. i was i was i was i was, I was just noticing some shit, right and how, how much Derek white gonna get right now just asking a question does not mean I have a problem with whatever the fuck Derek White is going to get. I just know that it's going to be more than 138 because if that's the bar that Drew's deal set, Derek might get 150, 160, 170, 180. And I think he worth the shit, so I don't even care. I just want, I was just curious. I was just noticing. You know what I'm saying? I was just noticing. You can give him a stake in the French. I don't care what you do with D. White. You need to make sure he's locked up too. Hopefully the Celtics get the Derek White thing done right i can't even imagine him not being on this team you will have your starting five locked up through like 2027 i know tatum still has to be signed i might be a little naive about this but i have no doubt in my mind that that's gonna get done so i'm not even thinking about that all right so now i want to give two round of applause to two people one of course brad Stevens, gm you bring these guys here you made this like the most perfect a team can get around tatum and brown you have a big man who can shoot over people who there's not a lot of defense for unless you're just really really physical which the playoffs are but a lot of times with the way that the settlers run offense and in the playoffs with a lot of their switch heavy actions chris asperzin is a guy that i'm not sure if i've seen somebody block his jumper all season right and in the playoffs a person that can't get blocked is really valuable so and then you add you holiday who again is the subject of this video congrats on his new contract coming into the trade we was like hey if there was anybody to replace smart on the defensive side of the ball the second best thing or even the better thing is drew holiday right the perfect person to come in right behind smart keep up the defensive intensity and the defensive prowess at the point guard position but then drew turns into one of the best three-point shooters in the league he turns into the best corner shooter of all time and he's just a true three and d we have five three and d players in our starting five and then another reason i'm giving brad this silent round of applause because i'm in the house and people sleep cash is gonna get tight for the sellers at some point it's just inevitable you have the huge contract of Jalen brown you're gonna have the huge contract of jason tatum you already signed chris asperzings to 30 million you just signed drew to a huge extension and then Derek white better be next right so you have your whole starting five that's making over 30 plus a year. Now, usually when that happens, teams have a lot of turnover. So it's like their core is intact, but every single season, guys six through 12 are one year deals. They just keep, it's, it's just a revolving door of the role players, which are very important to win the championship. Now, what Brad Stevens did is that he got out in front of extensions for our role players. So he extended sam hauser before he even became a rotational piece because he's seen that okay in about one year he's going to be a really big part of our rotation so let's just extend him now he has sam hauser on the three-year 5.6 million dollar deal and then at the beginning of this season 
he extended Peyton Pritchard for $7 million for four years, right? So essentially we have Al Horford whose contract is cut in half at the end of the season. We have Peyton Pritchard and Sam Howes who are locked up. That's our top eight guys, assuming they better re-sign D-White. Our top eight guys are locked in for numerous years. Now you're at a place where your, your ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th guys can be guys that you take chances on, that you sign in free agency. It's much different doing that with your 6th, 7th, and 8th man, because those guys are immensely important. You have to play those guys in the playoffs, right? So, and then the second guy I want to give a sign around of applause to was Wick. I remember I've been a Celtics fan since 2007. I was five years old and I became a Celtics fan. I just saw Rajon Rondo. I didn't really know what was happening, but I saw a point guard just running around, a small guy, so I catered to it. He was just making every play offensively and defensively. That's when I became a Celtics fan, right? But throughout like me actually knowing what's going on as a Celtics fan, Wick has been trying to get under the tax every single season. Trade deadline come up, he trades Tice and some other guys just to get under the tax. He trades Bo Bo just to get under the tax. It's not that there are significant things, but throughout all of those years, there was a sentiment that, look, we're not going over the tax. I don't care, we're not doing it. Wick has finally said, okay, I'm gonna open my checkbook. Here, Brad, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna kill you this card. You do whatever you want with it. I think he finally understands that he has a potential champion on his hands and he cannot hinder this team and his GM by trying to be cheap. Pay the tax, do whatever you gotta do. If you have a team like this, you have to take advantage of it. Now, if we don't win with this team, I don't know what to say. I don't even wanna go down that road right now. But thank you, Wick, for opening the checkbook and not hindering this team salary cap wise and yeah that's about all i got for right now i might have um a little bit more in-depth thing um a little bit later than this but for right now congratulations drew holiday congratulations for brad stevens and the celtics trading for a guy that's a free agent is always kind of risky but the celtics got that done um they extended him and porzingis the two guys they traded for i'm just i'm just so ready for the playoffs man i got a lot of content coming for the playoffs the clippers and mavericks have just confirmed to be a first round series the first actually confirmed first round series that's going to be a movie the clippers and luca have seen each other already a lot of times in the playoffs but this is the most reinforcements that luca has had so i'm really really excited to see i need both teams to be healthy i need Kawhi to play every game i need paul george to play every game i need harden all of them i need Kyrie. we need this series these are two organizations that are really familiar with each other especially in the playoffs so that should be a great series i should be doing like a playoff prediction thing for the whole nba when all those are said the celtics it looks like we're going to be facing the heel or the Sixers. i'll be doing the video on that of course the preview and throughout that series but that is the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and share it in there when you can. Just read out there a little bit more, and I will see you guys in the next video. This is Nick. Peace.